Do you have a sausage problem? Is your sausage the cause of embarrassment amongst you and your family? Do you have a decent sausage, but would like a better one? Well, in this episode of Carnivore, we ride to the rescue because we've teamed up with our friends from Outdoor Solutions and the Tea Diamond Ranch in Texas to bring you a tubular meat masterclass from Chef Albert Wood. Oh, and a few dick jokes as well. Well, before we start off, we're gonna have to get some groceries. So I'm gonna grab a rifle, head out in the bush and shoot something. I spotted these couple of bucks just as we crested this little rise here and uh, we watched them for about half an hour or so just deciding whether or not they actually wanted to take the shot and although I've been told there's a big 10 point out here you know it's one of those things where I would regret on the last day if I didn't take this one and I didn't get anything so I think a bird in the hand is worth two in the in the Texas brush so we're gonna go down there pick him up and go process him I'm no expert tracker by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm pretty sure this deer is well hit. Right, so we've got ourselves a whitetail and we've got ourselves a hog. It's time to go meet up with our mentor and find out about sausageification. So the first thing we do after we get the animal down is we field dress it, get the insides out as fast as possible, get the body temperature down as fast as possible. That's why we call field dress to get that out of there. So after you get, get the hide off, get it, the, body, the hide comes off easy when it's warm. Then what we do is we inspect it and then if you want to use this, this is the flank of the animal. If you want to use this meat, you want to take it off before you age it. Don't let it hang there because it's going to dry up. You're not going to be able to use it. So the next cut that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tenderloins off and then you're going to go over there and do the same thing. So we want to cut all the way up there 
and all the way down here to get that up. So we want the full tenderloin, not, not just part of it. We don't want to cut it there or even there. Way up here along the pelvic bone and come right down. Basically pull these right out with your hand. The front legs are not attached by anything other than muscle. So you can either cut it behind the leg or you can cut it off the carcass. If you're peeling this carcass off, take, take that with you. So I'm just gonna cut right, basically right down to the rib here. So I'm gonna just come in here, hit, go, hit that bone, and then come up to the spine. The finger bones are the bones that stick out. The feather bones are the bones that stick up. So now we're just gonna take this. You wanna be careful when you're doing this. You're not gonna cut yourself or your buddy. And just cut all the way right down to the back of the head. So this part is probably one of the most important steps right here, is these finger bones, you wanna get just underneath. So I'm just gonna do this, try to get underneath there for you so you can see this. So right, if you try to follow what you think the contour of the rib cage would be and follow the knife and went this way, you're gonna put a big gash right in that beautiful piece of meat. The rib cage comes up and then it goes straight in. So I'm just gonna try to see if I can peel this off so that you can see this. And you want to follow it all the way right down the neck. So this comes off basically all in one piece. So that's your strip loin, then your prime rib. So the hind legs are connected by a ball joint, which comes from the femur, which comes right in here. So I'm just going to cut right to that ball joint. And then I'm gonna cut right along the pelvic and I'm not gonna go all the way through because if I go all the way through, I'm gonna cut through the sirloin butt. So I'm just gonna cut along the pelvic and come out this wing and then come behind that wing. So this wing comes way out here like that. So I'm just gonna cut right along this. And again, there's 101 ways to skin a cat, but I'm, I'm doing this so you can see. So I'm coming right along there. Once I get around there, so then all I'm gonna do is come down here, here's that other wing. So you have to come around this wing, way out around, and then back. And you know, when you got an animal that has like two inches of fat on it, you gotta be, you know, it takes, sometimes that fat is ice cold, it's pretty tough to get through. So now we're pretty much ready to go. So we've come around there. We've come all the way around here. So we're just gonna take the leg and play like Arnold Schwarzenegger and just pop that like you would a thigh of a, of a turkey or a chicken. And the ball, you'll see the ball joint. The ball is on the femur. So the joint is on the pelvic bone. So the ball is on the bone and there's a little tendon in there that you want to cut. So once we cut through that tendon, we just follow this. And again, I'm not going, I'm going underneath that pelvic bone. And you just pull that off. So there's your, you know, hanging round. Shank comes off basically in two pieces. So you can just peel it off. And I'm just going to do this. You always want to cut down. And as you do this, and I'm doing this so that you can see it, and I'm going to try to leave these, uh, leave the shank actually right on there. You're going to find what those wings, I call them wings, nuts, and bolts that are holding this joint together. So this was the back left leg. So. When we get there, you can see that way out here, that, that uh, joint comes way out here. 
So I'm just going to come around that. And then, in, and you could do this in the field if you want to, didn't want to carry the bones out. And there are other ways to take in this off. But basically from here to here is a seam. And we're just going to take this and just cut right down through here. And we're going to try to peel this bone, peel the meat off the cut. And I'm not cutting, I'm not going to the cutting board, okay? If I went to the cutting board, I'm going to cut the meat on the other side. And, and uh, some people are fine with that because they know exactly where the seam is and they know how they're going to do that. I like to just hold it up. There's some more wings and nuts down here. And we pretty much have it all. Basically, we just turn it on. You can put meat up here in the hopper. This thing will grind it as fast as you can feed it. But the object is, is to feed it, not to not, not force feed it. We turn it on to forward, of course, and we take our meat and we just, and we're through the large dock. And it will take it as fast as you can feed it. Makes a good sausage. Let's get our grind on. Hands clear. Off we go. Wow, that was amazing. Isn't it? Yeah, I was just like straight through, no stopping, no hiccups. Oh yeah. Didn't even didn't even hesitate. Oh yeah. yeah. Took yeah. It. Big I mean, lumps. You could take a, you could take a whole elk for a whole deer and just go grind that baby up. All right, time to mix up and add our spices. How much can you fit in this little? Fifteen pounds on this. One. Yeah. So this uh, smaller one's fifteen. I need you 25 on this one. I do like me some spice. Let's try that. <laughs> yeah. That chili's good. So a small patty. Yep. And put your hands and push it into one pat or into one palm. Push it in. Okay, now flip that hand over. Sticking. If it if there was an approaching extraction it would fall.
we made a whole bunch of sausage and mops the roof. Let's go put it to the test. Let's head to the kitchen and let's eat out of crouch. Well, we hope that's addressed any meat problems that you might have had. If you have any others that don't pertain to sausage, let us know what you'd like us to cover. We're always here to please.